Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Ellie and today is a special day because we're kicking off a transformative journey together. I'm on a mission to go from fat to fit and my ultimate goal is to conquer a half marathon. It won't be easy, but I believe in the power of determination and hard work. Stick around because today I'm going to share my starting point, my training plan and the exciting goals I've set for myself. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the community. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Ellie and today marks the beginning of documenting what I hope will be an incredible journey, going from fat to fit through running. I started running about seven months ago as a way to raise money for MND New Zealand. Uh, that's a charity that's very close to my heart and over the last two years I decided that I would want to raise money by putting my body through things that it shouldn't be able to do. Uh, first, first of all, I uh, did a 35 kilometer mountain bike uh, race in which my chain fell off and broke on my bike halfway through. So every hill I had to get off the bike and push it up, but we still completed it. And I was really chuffed about that. Raised around $2,000, uh, New Zealand dollars for MND. And then I also signed myself up for an 11 kilometer traverse uh, at the Auckland Marathon uh, this past October. And from somebody who's done uh, 100 meters and got out of breath, I thought that that was a fantastic challenge uh, and I was correct. I ended up doing the 11 kilometer in about an hour and a half and uh, most people would say that's quite slow or at least, you know, it's around 8.30 per kilometer in terms of pace um, but I was pretty happy I'd signed myself up for finishing in around one hour 45 uh, which is slightly faster than walking but I knew that I was not ready for it I hadn't taken training seriously um, I was pretty hooked into into running uh, straight away I bought myself a new pair of runners for the first time in over 10 years uh, I bought myself a heart rate monitor and then I went and bought myself some running uh, sunglasses like all good runners should um, and from there I was hooked um, two days after I completed the 11 kilometer traverse I decided I was going to sign myself up for a half marathon uh, in Melbourne in June July next year uh, 2024 and three days after that I started uh, my training plan um, so I'm using a Garmin training plan uh, which is to 10 kilometers because uh, I would say although I ran 11 kilometers I'm not a confident runner of anything kind of over three kilometers um, when I first started so of course from three kilometers to 10 kilometers to 21 kilometers is some way and you know I know you you're probably saying these distances aren't exactly large but look <laughs> I am um, I'm in my 30s and I'm overweight. There's no other way to put it. Uh, I've been overweight for a while and I'm pretty active, but inactive, if that makes sense. Um, I play a lot of sport and I also coach uh, football to special needs uh, athletes for Special Olympics New Zealand. Um, I would say my level of fitness is poor, um, slightly better than the general public, but not where I want it to be. So what am I going to do about it? <laughs> um, running. Uh, I've actually already lost about five, six kilos from when I started this journey back in April. Um, and to be honest, I've not exactly been focusing on the nutrition side of things. That's definitely my weakness. Um, and also trying to find a schedule that works for me. And that's why I found the Garmin coach to be the best plan that I've followed so far uh, mainly because if I'm not feeling it that day I can just move it to another day um, and it also tells me if I'm actually in the right place uh, to go and do the run three kilometers for me now um, it's a challenge still 
but it's definitely not as challenging as it once was and I'm starting to see my pace uh, become better and my distances go longer which is great to see. So how am I tracking right now today? The dreaded health assessment right? Especially for someone who's in their 30s and they're also overweight. <laughs> it's not fun but let's be honest and transparent here. I've lost about five kilograms, five, six kilograms already, um, but I'm still at a weight I'm kind of ashamed to even state. But look, we're being honest with each other here, right? If I'm honest with you, you're honest with me. So uh, at this stage right now, what you're looking at is about 90 kilos of uh, New Zealand uh, English lamb, let's call it, <laughs> instead of beef. Um, if we're talking about VO2 max, my current VO2 max is poor. It's at 34, um, which is definitely not an athlete. Um, and my watch reminds me every day that I can definitely do better. So that's good. Chin count, two, as you can see. Push the chin forward, uh, one and a half. <laughs> Hopefully one day it will be one. Um, I'm running currently between 10 to 15 kilometers a week over three or four runs um, dependent on my schedule and um, in terms of fastest times everybody loves to talk PBs uh, I've just opened Strava and had a look at what I've got year to date so my fastest kilometer is uh, 6 minutes 18 seconds my fastest mile is 11 minutes and 12 seconds my fastest 5 km is 38 minutes 56 seconds and my fastest 10 km is 1 hour 22. So not that great but definitely uh, I can see improvement. I have been in somewhat of a building stage at the moment so I've not really been pushing to try and get to those PBs that I've set. Um, those PBs are set on good days and probably where I've pushed it a little bit too hard and, and not really thought about my recovery. So why a half marathon? Um, so little secret to tell, this isn't my first half marathon. Um, I've actually run two half marathons before, so this will be my third. Um, but this is my first half marathon training prep. Uh, my two previous half marathons were run in Sheffield, England, uh, which as you can tell from my accent, I used to live in England um, and I was at uni in Sheffield and again wanted to raise money for charity and thought what better way than putting myself through a horrid uh, situation of two half marathons. Uh, not consecutively, <laughs> just to put that out there. Uh, one on one year and uh, the following year I, I continued through. Um, both I really barely trained for. Uh, I was a lot fitter around that time. It's before, you know, beer and takeaways. Uh, part of my university journey uh, really started. So I was still pretty trim. And I was also training to um, gain entry into the Royal Air Force in England. Uh, something which was evidently unsuccessful now that I'm in New Zealand uh, and doing a very different job uh, but around this time my body was very different um, I'm almost 15 years older at this point um, and I need to train uh, 21 kilometers is a good size distance for someone who seven months ago couldn't even run 100 meters without being out of breath um, it's also kind of a little bit of a bragging right right three half marathons run one of which was in my 30s um, and I'm really hoping to see that that distance that I'm working to will help change me as a person and also my body. Okay, so the exciting stuff, the training plan. So I'm following my Garmin coach and I chose Amy to gu guide me to the 10 kilometers. Um, from what I read on Reddit beforehand, she's pretty good at on the building stage, which I'm still currently in, and increasing my aerobic endurance, which was something that I needed a lot of focus on. It's not necessarily that my muscles can't do it or uh, my mind can't do it. It's just getting to that stage where my heart rate isn't at the max straight away and for a very long time because that's pretty much where I was when I was running the 11 kilometers. I think I was at max heart rate for like 
95% of the run, which obviously uh, isn't good long term. Um, so for those of you that are aware of how the Garmin coach works, let me know your experiences um, in the comments below around uh, whether you've worked with Amy or whether you've worked with some other coaches. I'd be so grateful to hear everybody's feedback. Um, for those who don't, I get a schedule each week to adhere to. Um, it tracks how I'm going and my readiness to train so that I'm not overdoing it. Um, I get about a six to seven day view to the future to understand what's coming up. But other than that, I'm somewhat blind. Um, there's different stages within this, like a building stage and then, you know, starting to get ready for the race. Um, I've set a 10 kilometer race uh, in February so that I can do 10 kilometers by February. And that gives me from February until June, July to start getting ready for that extra 11 kilometers. Um, so I'm hoping that that's, that's enough time. Um, so when do I train uh, is the next question, I guess. So I train currently on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I have my long run set on Sunday, um, just because it's the easiest day for me in terms of my schedule. So the whole portion fits, uh, sorry, the whole plan fits around my uh, busy life quite well. So. Um, on Thursdays, I play football myself, and on Saturday, I coach football. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, currently, I've got set as a bit of hybrid, so um, gym days, trying to build and tone muscle and work on, you know, uh, not getting injuries. Um, and on Saturday, um, I technically class that as a recovery day, so I am actually having a day off. Uh, everybody knows that coaches don't really get super involved with it. They just shout and, and point and tell people what to do. So I take my coaching very seriously, but also I ensure that I'm actually resting on that day. Otherwise, I'm doing too much. Of course, I do listen to my body, though. If I'm starting to feel a little bit sick or a little bit run down, tired, uh, anything along those lines, I'll skip or I'll reschedule uh, one of my runs and I'll skip and reschedule gym. Um, I don't tend to run t more than once uh, on one day, um, otherwise I'm just too tired. So of course everybody has goals and these drive us uh, to better ourselves and these could be short term or long term um, and I suppose I do have a main goal finish the half marathon um i think a time-based goal is a little silly at this stage uh, of my journey um, but i hope that once i've done my 10 kilometer training plan i can kind of put a time on it um, my previous uh two half marathons were sub two hours 30 minutes so i would like to better that for sure um because if i can do that with no real training hopefully if i take it seriously and get the nutrition right and get my um, body into that cadence i can i can achieve something that's better than that obviously part of that is weight loss so that would be great um, my weight doesn't define who i am and i'm not bothered by my weight realistically um, if people have issue with it that's their problem not my problem um, but I do miss being a little bit lighter and being able to do more with my body. Um, and also buy cheap kids clothes because back in those days I'd still fit like, uh, you know, age 16. <laughs> yeah, I want things to be a lot easier for my body. Sport is so important to me um, and it's so hard now. Uh, I feel it more, uh, whether that be how long it takes me to get over it. The DOMs after working out are just horrific. Um, and I'm hoping that being lighter will help with that. Um, yeah, so those are my two goals. Finish the half marathon and lose a little bit of timber. Uh, so if you've made it to here, thank you. Uh, that means you've listened to me ramble about running, which probably means you're a runner too, or just your YouTube algorithm is like on the fritz and it's some 
somehow served you my video but either way if you've made it this far thank you so much for listening to me uh, for all that time um, if you're interested in following my journey then please consider subscribing um, just remember one foot in front of the other will create magical journeys see you later